Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I did a recent video, which is right there, about the new feature in Luminar Neo, which is portrait background replacement. I had a lot of questions about that. I wanted to come back in and do something a little bit harder and try to also answer a couple of questions. First question I get is, does it work on objects or pets? And the answer is no, it works on human subjects. Second question I get, and I'm gonna show you with this photo is, hey, does it work on groups? The answer is yes, it does. It's in layer properties, as you probably know, if you saw the other video or have been playing with this feature, go to portrait background, click on remove, give that a minute and it will calculate the mask and remove the background. There you go. Now, there's some edges that I need to refine and all that, and I'm gonna do that in the next photo. That's uh, this group portrait is not what I'm gonna work on here, but I wanted to show you that it does work on a group portrait. So let me pop to the very end of my library and I've got a photo here, here, there it is. And I've been playing with lots of portraits as you can see, and I downloaded this one from Unsplash. I'll put a link to the artist down below. So this is one where if you zoom in, you can see her hair. I mean, she's she's got curly hair. I mean, I've, my hair is getting long. Some of you have noticed I'm letting it grow just because why not? Um, and it's kind of curly, but it is not this curly. That's a lot of hair. And um, one of the objects, or excuse me, one of the questions I've had is how does this handle more complicated masks? Because like in my previous video and in a lot of my experiments, I was taking ones that are kind of simple. And when they're kind of simple, it's really good and really accurate. At first blush, when it's a bit more complicated like this, it's not as accurate, but... And the answer, of course, is, but you can refine it. And I want to show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and click background, uh, portrait background. I'm going to click on remove and let it remove that. And then we're going to kind of dive in and take a look. So there you go. If you look, let me zoom in. You can see that's too far. Let me do this with the old mouse. We'll go to 50. Um, you can see like the hair around here needs some work. The hair over there needs some work. There's some background coming in over there. This whole section was missed, but a lot of this was really good. And so that's what I'm finding is when the edges are really clearly defined and there's good separation between the foreground and the background, it's picking it up pretty well. So honestly, like her whole profile, uh, the edge of her side of her body and her arm and her arm here, honestly, great. I don't need to do anything, but up in here, I need to do some work. That's where the refinement brush comes in. As you can see, one click on it and you can see what it has called out as the background versus the transition zone versus the object, as it says here, or what I would call a subject, the human, right? Remember, the transition zone is this gray checkered area, kind of the um, transparent. So transition, transparent. The object is in orange, so object orange, both O's, and the background is blue, background blue, both Bs. Easy way to remember it. So for object, when I know I need to um, kind of give it a little more information, I like to come in and just paint around where I know um, the object is, right? So in this case, the object or subject uh, that I'm working on is of course her hair. And you do that with your mouse, you let go of it, and then it kind of fills it in. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that, maybe a little bit over here on her arm, simply because I just like to give Luminar more information. The more information it has, I think uh, the better results are, um, even though there were no real issues with some of these areas that I was working on. So you may not necessarily have to do that. Um, like I said, I think that's pretty clean all through there, but I wanna work on this zone right in here, and that's where you get into the transition. Just make sure you click on the right one, and of course, the size can be adjusted like that, or of course, with your bracket key. The right bracket key is larger, left bracket key is smaller. Here's the thing I do. It's picked up some of this transition zone. It did not pick up the rest, so I just kinda like to do the outline first. So I'll come over here, and I might make this a little bit smaller, maybe something about like that, and I'll just kind of come around in here and let Luminar know that, hey, this is a transition zone. Um, you're basically telling Luminar, hey, Luminar, I need a little bit of help. Will you help me kind of cut this out in those areas and something about like that. You give it a second, it calculates, and you can see it kind of figured it out. Then I come back in with a little bit bigger brush, and I want to paint over this hair because there's some of that hair that needs to be gone and some of the, or not be gone, but the background uh, is showing through. I want to get rid of that and all that. So I just come in and get the rest of that zone. Give it a second to calculate, and there you go. I mean, you can see that the hair is looking pretty good. If I do the before and the after, you can see it's picked up a pretty good amount of that. Now I'm gonna come over here, and what I recommend doing is two things. The first one is kind of smaller strokes, and uh, sort of by 
by virtue of the first one. The second one is smaller areas. In other words, don't try to do every single bit of her hair at once. I do a little bit at a time and let it kind of think about it because I feel like, and I have no idea if this is true, this is just the way I think of software when it's kind of AI stuff, which I think of this as AI, even though it doesn't really say it's an AI tool. I don't want to overload it with too much information. I just want to say, do a little bit here, do a little bit there, do a little bit there. I feel like it can do a better job it's the same approach I typically take with an erase tool. I'll do a little bit there, a little bit here, that sort of thing. So I'll speed up the video, but what I'm gonna do is go through and just do something like this, where you can kind of see there's some transition here. I'm gonna come in with you know a little bit of a brush and just kind of wipe over some of this hair and just let it know, hey, that's a transition zone. I need a little bit of help. And you can see that's cleaned that up pretty nicely. I'm gonna go do that around the rest of these edges and then I'll forward the video. So I've done a little bit there, I need to check my work. And one of the best ways to check my work is just to click on the refinements brush and close it, and it'll show you what it looks like. So now you can see, let me uh, show you the before and after. Remember the backslash key is a before and after. So you can see, I mean, I've got a blue wall on the right-hand side and this kind of pink sort of wall or whatever it is on the left-hand side. So I just hold the bracket key down and let go. There it is before and there it is now. So honestly, my mask looks pretty good. Now, there are some fine hairs over in here. And what I sometimes find myself doing is going back in with the object and actually painting over some stuff and then maybe backing up and reversing with the transition brush. So I might come in and do a little bit up in here just to reveal a little bit more. That builds out, adds more stuff back in, and then I click to transition, and you gotta be careful about you know, what uh, button you're clicking on on the refinement brush. And then I'll come back over here, and you can see it's got a little bit of blue. I wanna take that out and try to get those edges a little bit cleaner. So you can see I'm getting this little bit of a weird line here, and when I click the backslash key, you can see that is the wall. And so this is where I would probably go in uh, with the refinement brush again and just call that background just to clean that out a little bit because those really fine hairs are sometimes really difficult. And considering what I'm gonna do with the photo, it's really not gonna matter. And so let me try that to see how that looks. And I think that looks quite a bit cleaner. There we go, before and after. So overall, I would say it's pretty good. It's not perfect. And this is where I think it's important that you take your time and you kind of play around a little bit to make sure that you have what you want. One more time, there it is before and there it is now. I'm actually gonna use a refinement brush a little bit more over here around the edges of some of this hair. Okay, so there we go, that's what I had before, that's where I am now. So I think I'm in pretty good shape, it's not perfect, but I definitely recommend you take your time, you go through that, and sometimes you gotta go over and over that quite a few times. Sometimes, like I said, I'll add back object in order to expand the reach of the hair, if you will, to capture some of those uh, really difficult hairs on the side, and then come back with the transition brush. But this is where I wanna change a background, and this is something else I think about a lot, which is, depending on what you're trying to do. I think it makes sense to have the light and color in the foreground, which is your subject or your person that you've just cut out of a background, and the background to be kind of similar. Now, what I wanna do is go get a texture of mine and stick that on the background and then show you how I do some editing because I th sometimes think you, feel, uh, you might feel like you need to do an edit further for each of these layers, and you can do that individually. So I'm gonna click on images I've loaded. I'm gonna go to see all and I'm gonna click on this image, which is a texture now, it was shot horizontally, so it comes in like that. Now you can click fit, which will leave it like that, or fill, as you can see, it'll do that, or stretch. Stretch actually works fine here, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that to 100. You do have blend modes and things like that, I don't really care about that. What I wanna do, of course, and you already know this, is go ahead and move her up to the top. So now, even though I had a little bit of maybe a slight bit of that blue in the background that was kind of stray around the hair, it's gonna work with this background. So this is something else I think about. If there's a vast difference in color or light between the foreground and background, it might be difficult to get a perfect job, but also just take your time because you wanna make sure that the foreground and background match. So this is gonna end up looking something like a background drop, for example, that I might have uh, added. So here's what I wanted to talk about, and that is if you wanna go in and edit these photos, what I like to do and what I've done historically is gone in 
and in like Luminar 4, I'd create a stamped layer and then go edit that layer as an adjustment layer. But I can't do that here because we don't have stamped layers or adjustment layers. So what you got to do is you got to go in and edit each layer individually. And so if I click on, just remember you look on the left hand side here, if you click on the top, that's her, I would be editing her. But what I want to start on or focus on right now is the texture. And once you click on that, the texture is highlighted. You can come in and use any of these tools and do whatever it is that you want to do. So I'm going to start with Structure AI because what I want to do is basically just soften it up. And so I'm just going to go negative 100 and just kind of smoothing out that background. Then I'm going to go into details and drop some of those as well further just kind of um, you know smoothing out that texture basically right I'll also go into develop and go into the temperature and tint I want to pull this down I want to make it a little bit bluer because I like that maybe a little bit of a tint as well maybe something about like that then another one that comes in handy is the glow tool down here that kind of creates a nice little look I'm on soft focus and I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and drag that to like 50 60 something like that you can kind of see what it's doing so there we go this layer I mean we've massively changed that layer if you remember it was a it was a rough kind of brownish kind of concrete color texture and now it's kind of smooth and blue and patterned I think it looks pretty nice but now what I want to do is go in and edit her a little bit. Now remember, just make sure you click on the right layer so that you're editing the proper thing. And what I want to do with her is actually slightly reduce the intensity of you know how bright she is. So maybe something about like that. I'm going to add some smart contrast, kind of make her pop a little bit more, put on the highlights, maybe something like that. Then I'm going to go into the portrait tools because it is a portrait, so it's going to work there. Go into face AI, and I'm going to give her just a little bit of face light just to brighten that up a little bit. Maybe something about like that. So again, we went in and edited just this one or just this layer, which is her. And I think you can see, I mean, I think the hair kind of fits in. Even if I had some of that blue left over, I wanted to make this background kind of bluer. So it's something I think about is matching the light and color tones with the person that you've clipped out of another image and stuck onto this one. Now, the only other thing I'd like to do here really is just add a vignette. However, I'm on the layer that has her. I can't add a vignette because it'll just add the vignette to her. I don't want the vignette on her. I really want the vignette on the whole photo, but there's not a way to do that specifically. However, if I go back, to just the background texture the vignette is really just going to pull in the darkness around the edges of that and that actually works for me so i actually came in pulled in a vignette and it's kind of like adding it to a combined photo because i'm kind of darkening the edges of the background and there's one other cool thing here the inner light which i love to use on a vignette wouldn't work here it's not going to brighten her up but it does create this cool and interesting kind of glow effect behind her which I think creates a little bit more of an interesting look, almost like you've got a light back there kind of popping on her. So this vignette, even though it's only applying to the texture, which is the bottom layer, that's all the vignette is touching on, it kind of works overall as a vignette on this photo. I thought that was a kind of fun little trick. And that's my edit. So if I show you the before and after, the before was her standing there on this two-tone wall. I cut her out, spent a lot of time refining the hair, Take your time, especially that fine stuff. I just wanted to point out that you can do it because I've had questions, hey, what if it's a complicated background or a complicated subject? The background here is simple, but the subject with her hair being super curly and sticking out is a bit complicated. You can get it and I think you can make it look good. Just take the time, slow down, small brush strokes, small areas with that refinement brush on the transitional zone and I think you can get something that looks quite nice. One more time, the before, there it is and there's the after some ideas for you my friends maybe some tips and tricks for the portrait background removal tool here in luminar neo thanks hope it gives you some ideas thanks for watching my friends i'll be back soon with another video you guys take care of yourselves and until then adios